all a meeting together for the uh, Counseling Committee meeting of December the 7th at 6.05. The need to closure, disclosure of pecuniary interest on the agenda for today. Haven't seen any, haven't seen any. We'll continue. <coughs> Moved by Charlene Jackson, seconded by Kathy Rager, be it resolved that the council and the committee of the township of Whitewater Region adopts the committee meeting agenda for December 7, 2016. All those in favor? Carried. Good evening. We'll uh, open the recreation culture portion of the meeting. Um, one item on the agenda is the uh, Taste the Valley Committee report. Um, I won't read through it. Maybe I'll just touch on it quickly. Um, by all accounts, uh, we had lots of lots of meetings throughout the year. Very good, robust committee. I think we're going to add to it next year. Um, I think it was pretty well planned. Joy Curry and uh, this young lady beside me does a ton of work uh, just in planning and then the day of they do an absolute ton of work. Uh, all, it seems to be all behind the scenes, lots of late nights and early mornings. And, uh, and uh, anyway, we, I think we had the most successful from, from all of the vendors uh, from what they tell us. We had probably the most successful event ever. Uh, we actually even planned the weather to be as nice as it was that day, so it was, sex it was successful enough that a lot of vendors actually were sold out by around 12, 12.30, but, uh, so a lot of them ended up start packing up and going home. Um, I know the numbers say that they think there was about 4,000 attended. Um, a lot of the vendors think it was more like about 6,000 people. There was one area that wasn't really, weren't really kind of keeping track. So this is the first year we actually tried to keep track of how many people were attending the event. We had, uh, I think it was the Boy Scouts. Yeah. yeah, the Boy Scouts were at the front of the, at the entranceway, and they actually had counters. So we were able to get a rough idea of how many people were coming based on those counters. But we really didn't have anybody at the back of the hall, and lots of people came from that field. Uh, so we figure. Rough estimates are about 6,000 people attended the event this year, which is really outstanding. Um, and we're, we're working towards uh, a break-even um, projection. Um, the committee thanks council for their injection this year, which kind of gives us some seed money and helps us get going for the next year. Um, but I think, I think if we're as successful next year, the, the goal here is to, to eventually uh, we're not looking to make a profit, but we're looking to make enough seed money to start the, the future future events. Any questions? Do you have anything you want to say? No? Councilor McLaughlin? It's not a question, it's just a, a comment. I know that I worked at the uh, Civitan uh, food booth 
and I think we were up a third more than, than last year. So that just tells you a little bit. Uh, I also was involved with the library, and uh, I think they pretty well had sold out as well. So uh, I, I just have great comments. Great, uh, just want to say thank you. I think it was well, well done. Uh, and uh, I think the vendors, you're absolutely right. There's probably, I, I feel it was close to 6,000. Yeah. Thank That's you. That's just my comments. Thank you. Um, with, do you have a question? Yeah, but no, just a look. <laughs> just a questioning look. Um, we, we've already started discussions for next year's event, and we're, we're trying to, to add to it without, without uh, really commercializing the event. So um, there's some great ideas already coming out. I won't, won't reveal any of those now, but <clears throat> there's already some really good ideas that uh, will kind of help keep that hometown feel, yet we'll, we'll add different elements to the event. So we're looking forward to next year. And I think that concludes my portion until the end. Thank you. I guess I'll call this uh, Environmental Services Committee meeting to uh, order. I have a motion here moved by Charlene Jackson, seconded by Dave Mackay, be it resolved that the Environmental Services Committee of the Township of Whitewater Region approves an invoice submitted by Project Manager JP Du2G Consultant Inc in the amount of $31,144.44 for the Cobden Wastewater Treatment Plant Upgrades. Discussion? Call for the vote. All in favor? All in favor? Motion's carried. Okay, second on the agenda, I have a motion moved by Charlene Jackson, second by Dave Mackay, be it resolved that the Environmental Services Committee of the Township of Whitewater Region recommends accepting the revised projects schedule and relocation, reallocation of engineering costs for the Cobden Waste Cobden WWTP upgrades as put forth in in the JP G Consultant Inc. letter dated November the twenty eighth, two thousand and sixteen. Discussion. Uh, Councillor Jackson. I think the percentage has to be looked at. Um, they're proposing twelve percent of estimated costs. I think that's way too high. Um, I'd like to know um, a, better, a better understanding of why they feel 12% is fair, $960,000, um, of which, you know, they've already budgeted 400 and some thousand um, for the initial stages up till now. I think, um, and then 960000 on top of that, I think that's going a little bit beyond my liking. Um, this is a f we never discussed this at any of our meetings that we had. 
and I'm not prepared to allow for 12% at this point. Any other comments? Councillor uh, Olmsted. Yeah, I, I'd be in complete agreement of that. I, I'd, I'd want to see a, a very detailed breakdown of why they feel that the 12% is, is going to be fair. Okay, so what do we, do we wish to table this or <clears throat> will we go ahead with the vote? Any comments? Councillor Olmsted? I would, I would vote the table, at least. Okay. Do I? Uh, okay. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, the mover and the seconder if that would be, if they would be in favor. Yep. Councillor Jackson. Yeah, that's fine. Councillor McCoy. Then I guess we'll go ahead and table it. Then till we get some further information. And perhaps the committee that meets with JP2G can discuss that when we talk to them um, next week. Is it next week? Yes. Whenever we go. Yeah. Okay. Tuesday. I'd like to sit down and talk to them about that. Okay. The, uh, the next on the agenda is uh, the Aqua Service Cost Plus experience report for the third quarter of 2016. Steve? Um, I really don't have any comments on it. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, as per Brad's comments, the only thing not tracking uh, as expected is hydro costs. Other than that, it's... Anybody have any questions for Steve? Councillor McKay. Where do they take the sludge? Sludge goes to Mississippi Mills. It's been going there since probably 2012, 2013. Ottawa cut us off. Okay. Thanks. Councillor Jackson. Can I ask that they add one more line item, a total, grand total item, for the 2016 budgeted the year to date, budgeted in the year to date actual? Otherwise, you have to do it in your head. My head doesn't work this time of the night. So a 2,000... Um, uh, like, just total up. They've done it each individually, but if they actually yeah. do the total, total. Okay, for all the plants. For each one. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, and for each of them, and then... Sorry, I was just looking at page 22, um, the quarter three, the third quarter summary. Any other comments or uh, questions? If not, we'll move on then. We'll, uh, <clears throat> next on the agenda is the 2016-2017 inspection report for inspection that was performed by the performed at the Cobden Drinking Water System on August the 10th, 2016. Steve? Okay, so this is just a, our typical annual inspection report. Um, mm -hmm. This one happens to be on the Cobden plant. Um, the only, uh, there's no actions required uh, from the ministry official. Uh, there is recommendation. Um, we were asked quite some time ago if we had a uh, uh, a procedure or a plan in place um, in the event that uh, microcystin levels are too high in Cobden's drinking water, or in other words, blue-green algae. Um, it, we've never had that instance, um, and we have a, with using the Ontario Clean Water Agency, they have their contingency plans in place, but I think what the uh, inspector is looking for here is something that we have in writing. So this winter I'll be putting something together on paper. Uh, basically it just, what they're looking for is, uh, is, 
is, is the municipality to make a commitment to make sure that if we can't use the water out of the lake that we will provide uh, the people of Cobden with potable water. That's essentially the bottom line. Anybody, any questions? Councillor Jackson. The process that we've just gone through is a management review. Do they do a management review with, with you included and with Marsha? Um, their management review, uh, I, I can sit in on their um, audits, which I have done. Um, I don't believe I've ever been part of their management review, though. I believe that would be helpful seeing as um, it would only make sense. I know, it, I mean, they're looking after the plant, and I'm surprised mm -hmm. that um, the Ministry of Environment hasn't asked why you guys aren't involved in it. No, to me, it should be, you know, because the roads is involved as well, Bill is involved in yourself and Marsha. You know, like the report does go to the owners of, you know, which they mm -hmm. are, you and Marsha. Yeah. Um, and that should be included in the management review. Might be something worthwhile looking into. Yeah. Any other comments? If not, we'll move on to the last item. And I have a motion here. Moved by Charlene Jackson, seconded by Dave McKay, be it resolved that the Environmental Services Committee of the Township of Whitewater Region recommends to Council to support <coughs> the proposed the proposal as submitted to the Great Lake Guidance Committee Fund by Watershed Canada. Discussion? So this was a request that I got early this afternoon um, from the Muskrat Watershed Council through the um, lady that's applying on behalf of the Moder Muskrat Watershed Council uh, to the Great Lakes um, where am I going? Great Lakes Guardian Community Fund, which they did receive funding from last year. So they're looking to apply again this year and they need to apply by December the 10th. So they're looking for the township to throw in a letter of support and uh, ask me to bring that to council tonight. That's why it's an addition to the agenda. And uh, hopefully they get funding again because it was certainly put to a number of good projects last <coughs> this past year. And uh, we're looking to get more funding. So, uh, Councillor Jackson, do we need to direct staff to send a letter? The letter is prepared. The letter okay. is okay. Yep. On the uh, on the table. Councillor Ray here. So the letter looks good. The only uh, comment I have is I think it should be dated. I think we should have uh, a date on it somewhere, so we at least uh, have that information. But everything else looks good. Thank you. Marcia, I don't think you need to bring it back. Just put a date on it. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay, any other comments? Steve. Uh, thank you. Um, with respect to item number one, um, Councillor Jackson had uh, stated that we will discuss it at next week's meeting you're not available next week for a project no. meeting oh yes oh, we're going changed, back they've okay. changed the time um to um 8 30 or 9. oh brian, I, I didn't get that message brian either. whitehead gave me a call to see if it would suit okay so uh he'll probably send out an email as to what time but he was going to okay. confirm up that it was going to be earlier Oh, great. Okay. I, I was just wondering what questions would you like me to ask in terms of a breakdown of this 12%? Yeah, because I think, well, that meeting, I understand, is for the telephone Yeah. with the uh, ministry. Yes. Um, so hopefully we'll get a chance to talk to okay. them. If not, I'll give Brian a call or yep. whoever okay. a call. Or First, before we get any further on this, I have a motion on the table. Okay, uh, and uh, do I need to reread the motion, or does everybody understand the motion? Then I'm just going to ask for a vote. All in favor? 
Motion's carried. Now, Mr. Johnson. I just wanted to uh, add to what Charlene said is uh, I have to be at an appointment at 10. I phoned, or sorry, I sent an email and, and Charlene I knew from their response uh, had a, an appointment at the same time. Yeah. And so for us it needs to be earlier. But they were still going to get to the environment people to see if they could do it earlier. And then they'll get back to you. Perfect. Okay, I think that ends the uh, Environmental Services Committee meeting, and I'll turn it over to Corporate Services and Chair Jackson. Okay, I'll bring the Corporate Services Committee to order. First item on the list is Councillor Remuneration. We do have a motion moved by Councillor Mackay, seconded by Councillor Rigger. Be it resolved that the Corporate Services Committee of the Township of Whitewater Region recommends to Council to pass a blank percentage increase for the 2017 Council Remuneration and that Bylaw 1612905 be brought back to December 21st, 2016 regular Council meeting. So if you remember, whenever Bruce did his um, recommendations. It was really for a 2016 value and, uh, and it was decided at that time that whatever increase um, staff would kind of receive that it was going to continue to go up the same as what it has in the past for counselors. Um, so I don't know if you want to decide now on a percentage increase. Um, my hope is that when um, Mr. Tremblay arrives on the 19th. He's going to have some suggestions, and uh, maybe we want to wait until January to bring this back so that he can make some recommendations for, for a bylaw uh, for both the employee's remuneration and the counselor's remuneration. And then it would be retro back to January 1st, 2017 for both. So I don't know what everybody's thoughts are, but that's my thought. Any discussion? Councillor Rieger? I would agree with that. I think uh, I would let our new CAO get involved and see uh, he may have some suggestions. So I would certainly favour that. Okay. Any other discussions? Councillor McLaughlin? So, <clears throat> just, just for clarification, then we're, we're not going to move forward with the remuneration. Is that correct? That's what I'm suggesting, yes. Okay. At this time. Uh, <clears throat> my my question then goes because there is some things in here. Uh, if I if I maybe I may be wrong, but the appointments uh, to the uh, the <clears throat> Ottawa River Power and the the appointment to the uh, the other board. Are they, do they have to be done before January? I would look to Hal for that. I mean, we can make that appointment, and that's not going to be any different. Uh, it's not going to affect the remuneration, but the ORES and the ORPC, is that what it is? OR. It's my duty to appoint all boards at the beginning of each year, and uh, so, uh, and then they are approved. And so if you want to wait till the very first meeting in January, I don't think that would make much difference. Okay, does that answer your question, Councillor McLaughlin? Well, well, it kind of does. So then those appointments wouldn't be put in place until after the January meeting. Is that that's what I'm understanding? So that the appointments that are in place now will remain until reappointed? Because really it's the appointments get in, put in place at the beginning of the council term, and we had discussed that we kind of wanted uh, new appointments in each year where changes, some wanted to have changes, um, and that that should maybe come this year, but um, 
we don't have any appointments right now on the table to, to move forward, but so I think it's fair to say that well, those would remain until they're appointed sometime in January. Okay, as long as the appointments and the remuneration coincide, that uh, I don't have a problem. One has nothing to do with the well, other? Well, I think it does have something because somebody, somewhere along the line, this appointment to the Ottawa River Park Corporation and the energy solutions have to be made, do they not, or do they stay in place? And I thought that once it was in place that it stayed for a year. Is that not correct? No, it stays for the term of council. Well, I think we've changed. We have, we, we've suggested that change, and that's why there's going to be new appointments come, but one has nothing to do with remuneration. It's a separate um, okay. bylaw okay. or Are motion you... for appointments, and, and Mayor Johnson has agreed that he will bring new appointments in the new year. Okay. Um, um, I'm, I'm fine. I don't need any more clarification. I just I know what I had in my mind. And, uh, I think it's the, it's the same, but okay. so what this is saying here, Councillor McLaughlin, is that if the mayor remains on the ORPC, that the, the honorarium that he would receive does not include the ORPC, so he would get the honorarium as suggested at 20000 and if he was the representative on the ORPC, he would also get that re, um, remuneration. Is that the same understanding as you? But my understanding as long as it's a council member? But th this is for the mayor, so I'm talking the ORPC right now, and the ORES, okay. yes. Okay. Yep. And then that was another suggestion that we had made. Yes. With, with regards to the ORES, that whether or not it was going to be a council member or not, um, the appointments are made by by the mayor and then they are approved by council so we can talk about those appointments when they come and if it isn't a council member at that time we can either accept it or reject it. Okay, that's, that's fine. Yes. Mayor Johnson? I just want everybody to be prepared because of the, uh, because of the uh, information brought to me by the public <coughs> and the request that uh, the crests that we've had in writing to the uh, committee. I will be asking for this to be readdressed and to be voted on at a uh, council meeting. Sorry. <clears throat> I, uh, I agree with them. I agree with the people and the people who we represent that uh, there should be uh, people at large on our committees and uh, this one especially because of the high-end um, um, experience required and, and the, uh, the oh, lost the word, the, the, the set. I have had it before, the, uh, the amount of information that, that goes through and the amount of rework required and I, I believe that it works, serves everybody best and they have come to me as I mentioned at the last meeting the uh, ORPC or PAS uh, have come to me <coughs> and asked that we keep uh, going with one member from the public and that the energy board is moving towards that and may come down with a ruling before the end of the uh, electric term of four years that we're in now. And they would like us to place on our nominations or appointees the full four-year term so they have consistency within their system, which makes a great deal of uh, sense. So just so everybody's aware of that, that's going to be coming back and rediscussed. Thank you. Councillor Olmstead. Um, yeah, just on another subject on with, within this uh, package, I don't think we captured the entire discussion on the conference and convention changes, <clears throat> where this is pretty much stating the $3,000 a year, but I think we added some flexibility to that, if I'm not mistaken. You discussed it, but you didn't come didn't to pass a, it? No, you didn't come to a full um, conclusion. 
So the only conclusion that you had at that time on the September 7th meeting was that uh, you would be paid $100 a day up to a maximum of four days, which will come off your total allotment of conferences. But I know what you, there was discussion as to if somebody was over, that it would kind of go around, but nothing was, like there was no vote because I watched the video. <laughs> Councillor McLaughlin? And you're probably right, but I remember the discussion too as well. We were going up it to $4,000 because uh, I, I remember that is distinctly because you start taking the money off your $3,000. You can't go to two conferences as it is with, with $3,000, and then you're going to take another $400 off of that. So that, that would totally eliminate you to one conference. So... I remember that discussion because I remember Reeve Miller said, "How can you do this? Because three thousand dollars, you can't go to two meeting, two conferences, and now you're going to take and get paid a hundred dollars a day, and you're not raising the honorary, the 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 amount." So I, I remember distinctly, and am I right, Marcia, on that discussion? I know I don't think it was voted on, but no, yeah, it, it wasn't certainly voted was there. On, but there was okay. Talk about I, I agree with Councillor McLaughlin. I think $4,000 is more reasonable. $3,000 <coughs> only, and especially when you have council members that are new, the amount of, um, you're very limited with, with that amount of money if you're going to any sort of conferences um, away, uh, especially Toronto away, which most of them are. Um, that $3,000 certainly barely covers one, if not two, and you want your councillors to know as much as possible. Um, right off the get-go, and that decreases over time. I know in other municipalities they get more than $4,000 allotment um, for conferences and convention and training. Um, so can I get a consensus so that when Robert does get here, when Mr. Trombley does get here, that we're going to look at a percentage increase to what was recommended here the 20 and the 14.8, that this was basically the 2016 rate and we would look at a 2017 uh, cost of living increase. Is that fair to say? And whatever that percentage is that we agree on the non-union or, or um, that it would be the same, we come back with sort of a policy that for future, that it would be the same? Councilor McLaughlin? But, but I'd like to get this thing put in place. We beat this thing for a year now. I know, but it, it will be retro back and we're just not ready to pass it tonight. I, I don't, okay, no, and you don't have a problem with that, but once you start to retro something, then you make it very hard on staff. But if we don't, if we pass it in January, there'll be no retro for council uh, because we don't get paid until the end of January. I, I like your suggestion. Let's pass it in January. Let's get this thing done. Is, I guess, what I'm saying. Absolutely, that's what I'm suggesting. Okay. Okay, so whatever um, at corporate services in January, it should come back and, and um, the CAO should have a recommendation with regards to a percentage increase uh, for both remuneration for employees as well as for um, council. And as well, um, the mayor will have his appointments ready for the committee meeting in January is my understanding, and then we'll pass all of that at a council meeting, the second meeting in January. Is that fair to say? Yay. Okay. Number two, ten. Oh, uh, Councillor Mackay and Councillor Regier, are you okay to table that? Uh, item number two, tender for janitorial services for municipal office in Ross Garage. Is there any comments from anybody um, ready to go out with this tender? Is there a closing date? Yes, December 30th. December 30th. And this will only this only consists of the township office here as well as the Ross Garage. We spoke with uh, the roads crew and uh, the Westmeath and the, the Westmeath garage as well as the Cobden. They don't need any uh, cleaning services there. They so can do it. 
just the Ross Garage office facility, basically? Yes. Not the actual garage garage? Yes, no, not the garage. Can I make a suggestion that we change the font? Yeah. The font is terrible. It's the kid's font. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll do that. 